Hello to all viewers. Welcome to our next episode of What's Up Prof. Hello Walter. Good day again to you. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine, thank you. Ah, I'm glad. Can you open it for the, us with a word of prayer, Absolutely. Please? Our Heavenly Father, the input from the world out there is enormous. And you have given us guidelines in your word as to how we should filter and sort the information. And I pray that you will grant us wisdom in this process. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So in the previous episode, we discussed a little bit on the videos that crops up about uh, QAnon and all these different role players. And I thought maybe it's uh, relevant that we talk about deception. Yeah, deception is, uh, is something which cuts in many directions. Deception can be deliberate. Deception can be incidental. Uh, sometimes people practicing deception do not even know that they are practicing deception because everybody is just using information that comes to them and the way in which they perceive the information is the way in which they will use the information. So if you do not have a guidebook, which again is this Word of God, yes. then you will get lost in the maze of deception because that's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. He said, the sign of the times of the end is the first one he mentions, be careful lest anyone deceive, deceive you. So filter everything through the word, basically, is what we are to do. So will you guide us a bit in, from both sides, how this deception can be implemented or how it's working? Yes. We have to keep in mind what is the end game. Where are we heading? And we're getting information, as we spoke about QAnon, for example, from one side and information from another side. And it seems as if there are these two parties out there that are heading for a confrontation. Mm. And who are the role players in the confrontation? So it seems as if two sides are crystallizing out of this whole episode. On the one side you have uh, those that have uh, religion as their basis and on the other side you have the fear of dominance and control and giving up your freedoms, etc. And that doesn't necessarily have to be religious, it can be completely secular. And how these parties are driving men in a particular direction and what can the outcome be. And when we spoke last time, we said uh, both sides could be part of the deception because that's how Hegelian dialectic works. So let's have a look at a few of the videos that are going around and let's see if we can, we can glean something from them. But of course, we're not going to say that this is what we believe, no. this video, or this is what we believe, that video. Uh, what is the, the information that eventually crystallizes out in terms of the direction in which we are going to move? So please don't misunderstand, we're not showing videos to say this is the side that we are choosing or that is yes. the side that we are choosing. We're just observers Correct. in this game. Yes. So let's have a look at the first one. If this doesn't get rectified in the very, very near future, within the next few weeks, our world, and when I say our world, I'm not just talking about where I live or where you live, but our world, our planet is going to be a different place. They will be sicker. They will be controlled. They will not have any privacy. They will not have any future. I want to make sure the world understands where the problem lies. This is misinformation to the highest 
order. And the reason for this misinformation is what's coming down. The danger is not what's in front of you. The danger is what you're being distracted from. The only way that you can control people is by keeping them in ignorance. The world needs to wake up and understand that what's happening right now is an illusion and it's going to mandate other things coming down, which is include RF chips. Everybody's going to have mandated vaccinations so that they can track th those people and know who's been vaccinated, who's not been vaccinated. Stanford came out with a study a couple days ago. The Stanford study said this shows that the rate of death from COVID-19 is no different from influenza. That's what the study showed. Do you know what mainstream reported? That the study showed this is more rampant than anywhere else on the planet. Uh, it's, it's more rampant than we thought. Well, of course it is. I think the entire population of the world has been exposed to it. But they didn't focus on that part of it. They just said, because a study, the Stanford study said that we think it's more, much more widespread, but the death rate is no difference in flu. And in fact, that's based upon the data that they're giving, the data that's being reported for cause of death. But you know the memes right now. You fall out of a plane without a parachute, cause of death, COVID-19. You get shot in the head, COVID-19 killed you. You have a heart attack, COVID-19. They're putting the cause of death as COVID-19 for almost everything right now. And you know we've heard this type of information before. Some would call it conspiratorial, some would say it's rhetoric. But look, right now, you would have to be blind and deaf to not recognize that what is happening is not normal and is not justified. And because they can't justify the numbers, they're now manipulating the numbers. They're now adding numbers to it. In other words, the number of deaths weren't sufficient to justify this. So they're now having not nurses and doctors change death certificates after the patients have died. The only way that you can control people is by keeping them in ignorance. But as soon as a person becomes empowered with knowledge, the one thing is that nobody can control you once you are aware. You cannot be victimized once you're aware and once you've been empowered with knowledge. Well, what do we learn from Dr. Buttar? <laughs> we could play much more, of yeah. course. But there is this idea of we are being manipulated. Uh, we are being misled. Yes. And obviously, if that is the case, then there must be somebody who is doing the misleading. Mm -hmm. And who are these people? Well, they're sort of crystallizing out who the deep state is, who the enemy is. And the name that always crops up is, of course, Bill Gates and uh, anybody associated with them, Dr. Fauci, Fauci. all of these things, uh, they, they are being portrayed as this force that is trying to control everyone. So that's one side of the scenario. We're not taking sides here. No. We're just this is putting the information that is out there yes. into perspective. Okay. Now, this is not the only one. I mean, there are literally hundreds of them that are making the rounds, which sort of keep on telling us what the situation is. So let's have a look at the next one. When is Bill Gates' uh, serpent tongue going to come out of his mouth? And, and when will his horns and tail appear? This man is, this man is, is building Lucifer's antichrist system. This guy's an enemy of the human race. He's an enemy of Almighty God. Uh, Bill Gates is turning out to be one very evil man. These people know what they're doing. Their father is the devil. They work for Lucifer. They know who, who they're working for. They know what they're building. I'm going to tell Mr. Gates right now, you're going to have to kill me. You're never going to get me to take your, your vaccine or your quantum dot whatever. You'll have to kill me. And if Mr. Gates and other billionaires continue to push their agenda, then they are going to push people like me to call for the confiscation of their wealth. I mean it. If these guys continue this talk of requiring mass vaccinations, immunity cards, immunity passports, microchips. Buddy, you're, you're starting a fight. You, you wish you never started. Yes. Because the American people will rise up and we will strip you 
down to your tidy whities Mr. Gates. There'll be a populist revolt that unites the left and the right. Don't try to do this stuff to us. Well, give, it's not going to work. the ankle bracelets. It's not going to work, Edward. And, and Christians had better... Uh, better get ready for a confrontation with these people. They're coming after us and our families. They have an evil agenda. They do. And the government needs to know there will be an uprising if they try to do it. There will be blood in the streets if Bill Gates pushes this agenda. It will not go down. Well... Rick Wiles is sort of representative of what many in the Christian world believe, especially in some of the circles where uh, this theology of the microchip and all of these are, of course, very prominent. And, and you can see the anger. Yes. And you can see the fear. So on the one side, you've now identified an enemy and you're going to have a reaction against the enemy. And the reaction which he suggests is quite drastic, right? Yes. So now, how are you going to resolve this issue? How are you going to resolve the issue between this so-called deep state, which has this agenda of enslavement, and this idea that this is part of the biblical scenario for receiving the mark of the beast. This is part of the deception. Mm. And we called it double blind, right? Because you're playing both sides of the fence. Yes. So we need to look at a few more just to see where we're going. Yes. What was also interesting for me, I, if you picked up, that he said the left and the right. Both of them will come together. To stand up against this. Yes. Now, the one side is concerned because of their religious views and the mark of the beast as they perceive it. And the other side is concerned about their freedom yes. and about their liberty. So both of them will come together. This is Hegelian dialectic. How can a man who's giving, any, any person who's giving global advice for health own a patent in the solution in the vaccine. Isn't that a conflict of interest or shouldn't it be? It is a conflict of interest. And in fact, this is one of the things that I, I've been saying and would like to say to President Trump, repeal the Bayh-Dole Act. Bayh-Dole fundamentally changed the way universities approach technology transfer. Uh, and you can see that best in the statistics. Universities obtain 16 times as many patents today as they did in 1980. Now, this vid video is by Jenny Mikovits, right? And she apparently worked with Fossey and all of these people and is a, a very prominent scientist. And the story about uh, her treatment and how she went to prison and all of these things is, is, uh, is fueling this fire. And of course, she calls them out. And she says that what they are doing is illegal. And now they are appealing to a savior. Yes. A savior must come and resolve this situation. Now, again, we're not saying that this is deliberate or whether it is fake or whether it is true. That's not the issue. The issue is what is the outcome going to okay, be? Yes. Where is this heading? Exactly. So... We can see a pattern developing, and this is very fascinating. Because if you, if you have the Word of God as your basis, and you see where the deception lies, then eventually the pattern should emerge. Yes, correct. So let's look at the next one. Could it be that, that President Trump right now has been sort of raised for such a time as this, just like Queen Esther, to help save the Jewish people from an Iranian menace? As a Christian, I, I certainly believe that's possible. The voice of evangelicals, the Reverend Franklin Graham, says President-elect Donald Trump was put in the White House by God, as you just heard there. And we're willing to listen to God's voice. And I believe this election, no question, 
I believe God's hand was in it. God's used uh, imperfect people all through history. King David wasn't perfect. Uh, Saul wasn't perfect. And I said, Mr. President, I know there are people that say, you know, you, you said you were the chosen one. Uh, and and I, I said, you were. I am the chosen one. I think God uh, calls all of us to uh, fill different roles at different times. And I think that um, he wanted Donald Trump to become president, and that's why he's there. And uh, I think he has done a tremendous job in supporting a lot of the things that uh, people of faith really care about. Is he there for such a time as this? What is your view kind of spiritually on the sovereignty of God and, and what he's doing exactly by putting Donald Trump as president of the United States. Well, you know, I think it goes to show that things, everything happens for a reason. I see the greatest president in history. Of course he is. He was chosen by God. It wasn't about doing politics. It was about an assignment to say no to President Trump would be saying no to God. Explain why you say that God has given President Trump the authority to attack North Korea. There is a great deal of confusion among Christians when it comes to this, this idea of using force to topple evil. And I wanted to clarify that I believe the Bible, especially Romans 13, does give President Trump moral authority to use whatever force necessary, including assassination or even war, to topple an evil dictator like Kim Jong-un. But this is the greatest president for Jews and for Israel in the history of the world, not just America. Trump Trump's the best president for Israel in the history of the world. And the Jewish people love him like he is the king of Israel. They love him like he is the second coming of God. I find that rather astounding. So we are getting the picture that the Christian world is regarding him as the savior. Now they all know that he has shortcomings. Yes. And... Uh, uh, we all have shortcomings and they they use the story of David to say that David had shortcomings but he was a man after the Lord's own heart and therefore it doesn't matter whether you are like this or like that as long as you are being used by God to further a particular agenda so yes now Donald Trump is fascinating because he's often depicted to be at loggerheads, let's say, with the papacy regarding the wall, for example. Yes. So Pope Francis says that a person that erects walls is not a Christian. And Donald Trump counters and says, well, he doesn't really know me. He doesn't know the problem at the border. He doesn't know any yeah. of these things. The Pope uh, funded the caravan. And yes, yeah, he gave uh, half a million dollars for for funding the caravan so they seem to be at loggerheads now what's interesting is even though they seem to be at loggerheads they visit each other they exchange gifts they show solidarity when they are with each other so what is this uh, animosity that is going on behind the scene yes and he surrounds himself with a lot of um Christian leaders. Absolutely. He has a, a large council of advisors, many of them evangelicals, many of them Catholics. Uh, his administration has many Catholics on them. They has public displays of evangelicals praying over him, etc. So, yes, there is this, this strange bond. Mm. And yet he has this strange Christianity where he believes that uh, you, there's no need to repent or to ask for forgiveness. Just, just do better, work and carry on. Don't bother God with, with the details of your sin. So we have this dichotomy. On the one hand, you have this enemy, and on the other hand, you have this potential savior who seems to be uh, incapable of doing anything at the moment because of the coronavirus, etc. So what will come out of this is actually what we are interested in. So let's have a look at another one. Now, some of these uh, productions that we see out there 
they see that something doesn't quite fit. And uh, on point preparedness, there's this, this little video where they are saying something's not quite right because they're playing both sides of the game. And mm. is there something wrong here? So not everybody is choosing one side or the other. Some people are standing back and asking the question, is there another agenda? So let's have a look at this one on point preparedness. Now, I do love everything that Donald's doing as president from a worldly sense. I love the fact that he's securing the borders. I love the fact that he's focusing more on America. I love the fact that he wants to take down the Federal Reserve and all these other things. But I also understand that there's this principle of ordo ab chao, order, order out of chaos. And whether we like it or not, the current world order is centered around America with the American dollar being the world's reserve currency and America being basically a strategic geopolitical nation that is sort of a glue that is holding everything up today. And so we have to understand that when we start retracting America back from the world, it is going to cause chaos and we know exactly what ensues after that. Now, I do want to talk about Paula White who is Donald Trump's spiritual advisor. She is actually the person that is claimed to have led Donald Trump to Christ. Now, she is currently his spiritual advisor. She's currently mentoring him. So I think it's good that we take a look at what type of person she is and what she says about Christianity and her beliefs. According to Hebrews, that Jesus is our high priest. Absolutely. And he's the first of many brethren, which means I now come into a priestly anointing. So I now can... S say that again, because I they now, don't get it. I now come into a priestly anointing. Jesus is not the only begotten on. Son of God. He is not. I'm a son of he's God. He's the first fruit. You, you're the, he's the first fruit. He's the first born of many. Anointing. Jesus is... Now, mind you, this is the woman that led Donald Trump to Christ and is currently leading him. That ties into our last video on the head coverings and headship and authority. And so you see that there's something wrong with that as well. But she says that Jesus is not the only begotten son. Have you not read one of the most popular verses in the Bible, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life so for paula to say something this extreme is blasphemous it really is and i'll show you why and mind you she is the one that is a spiritual leader or mentor of trump so i mean i gotta tell you folks yeah i like everything he's doing in terms of the presidency and in terms of worldly things but don't let that completely cloud your judgment your Christian judgment. Now, just like everyone else, we are to pray for him, but too frequently I see Christians clamoring over him, saying that he's gonna restore Christian values, much like Israel who put his face alongside of a coin with King Cyrus. It really disturbs me, especially when he has not asked God for repentance, which is publicly on record several years ago. He is currently surrounding himself with spiritual advisors that are indeed false teachers. He's not bearing the fruit of the Spirit. It all is very concerning to me, considering the times that we're in, and the fact that there will be a mystery Babylon, which is a false religion. You can see very easily how the promotion of a restorative Christianity led by false teachers is not a good one. So... Yes, really good things coming out of the Trump administration in terms of like worldly things and government and policies and things like that. Um, but we have to understand the times that we're in. We have to have spiritual discernment. And I'll tell you what, my antenna is just like flying off the radar right now with everything I'm seeing about him and who he surrounds himself with. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. God bless everybody. How does he do that? He does that through you. He does that through me. Wherever I go, God rules. When I walk on White House grounds, God walks on White House grounds. When I walked in the river, God
God walked in the river. When I go into the dry cleaner, that dry cleaning place becomes holy. I had every right and authority to declare the White House as holy ground because I was standing there and where I stand is holy. I find it incredible that God is subject to our movement and we are not subject to God's movement. So people are seeing that something is wrong, but they're not quite putting their finger on the pulse. They realize that there is some false teaching here, mm. but what is the final outcome? That's what we have to look at. What is the final outcome? Because a good, well, if you can say it good, but one thing that's this is doing and the uh, the person in the video also mentioned it it's a lot of moral good is getting coming out of all of this correct but is that the only thing that's coming out of this exactly so where exactly is this going to take us and are these conflicting sides really enemies or is there a greater agenda behind the scene playing the two off against each other to prepare the minds of the masses mm -hmm. to accept something? Yes. There have been some interesting things happening in the world of late and uh, many people associate uh, the events with, uh, with the wrath of God and the mm -hmm. anger of God. A Utah earthquake damages Mormon temple and knocks trumpet from iconic angel statue. That, that must have surprised some people that the angel Moroni who, who gave those tablets to Joseph Smith should be uh, <laughs> relieved of his trumpet. trumpet. They say here the trumpet on the angel Moroni statue fell off and there is minor displacement of some of the temple's smaller spire stones, uh, a spokesman for the church said. Now, some people might interpret this that God is displeased about something and uh, that is why this happened. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people look at these things and are wondering uh, what's happening in the world. Now here's an article from the National Catholic Register and it says, is the coronavirus pandemic a judgment from God? So where is this heading? Is the coronavirus pandemic a judgment from God? It is a question being debated by many Christians. This is important. Mm -hmm. Even bishops and cardinals, Pope Francis and the extraordinary prayer service broadcast live from an empty St. Peter's Square on March 27 prayed, Lord, you are calling to us, calling us to faith. It is not the time of your judgment, but of our judgment, a time to choose what matters and what passes away. A time to separate what is necessary from what is not. It's interesting how they're using this uh, lockdown to define for us what is a necessity and what is not a necessity. Yes. I mean, the stores, you, you can only buy what is a necessity. You walk in the store and in the same store, what's on the shelf there has got a tape over it. You're not allowed to buy that, but you're allowed to buy what's next to it because this is deemed a necessity by somebody else. Now, who defines what is a necessity, right? But nevertheless, Half the human race is under some form of lockdown, as if suddenly consigned to an involuntary retreat. Have we sometimes failed to honor the Lord by keeping the Lord's day? This is fascinating, because we have in our lectures consistently said that the issue is not a microchip, the issue is who do we honor with our obedience? Who do we acknowledge as the supreme being in our lives? Is it God and his word? Or is it the church and their word? And we know that Roman Catholicism has changed the law of God and that the Christian world is running with the papal commandment in that they observe the first day of the week and not the seventh day of the week. By the way, when we talk, <laughs> I'm off topic now, but if we talk about the cosmic week, mm. if you're going to move that seventh day, 
the millennial period to the next day, which would then be the next first day of the next week or the eighth day. And you're actually cutting out the millennium and you're cutting out the millennium of God's rest. Yes. That would be a disaster because that means there is no millennium. And that's exactly what Catholicism teaches. It teaches a millennialism. The church will rule. There is no such yes. thing as a millennium where Satan would be bound. And most Christians out there also believe this, that the thousand years will be ruled on earth. Absolutely. Whereas God clearly says that the saints will be taken away and thrones will be set up in, in, in heaven, heaven and not here on earth. But be that as it may, he's asking, is there a problem because we have not honored the Lord's Day? Have we treated Sunday just like any other day? as a time to go shopping, get work done and pursue our own agenda instead of taking time to deepen our relationship with Jesus and relax with family and friends. Now, that cuts both ways. Yes. Spending time with Jesus, that addresses the religious world. Spending time with family and friends, that uh, addresses, well, both, but the secular world as well. Yes. In the Old Testament, God decreed that Judah would go into exile for a time corresponding to all the Sabbaths they had broken until the land had retrieved its lost Sabbaths. So now perhaps our frenetic society is retrieving its lost Sabbaths. This is where it's actually heading. Mm -hmm. Now, in how far is it being implemented? Yeah. How far are they testing the implementation of this. Exactly. Let's look at this. Pope Francis, this is Zenit News, Day of Prayer and Fasting and Works of Charity on May 14. Uh, that was the original date when he was going to have this meeting with the leaders of the world and the, create this think tank on re-educating humanity. Pope Francis has accepted the proposal from the Higher Committee of Human Fraternity for May 14, 2020 to be a day of prayer and fasting and works of charity to implore God to help humanity overcome the coronavirus pandemic. So they ask, is the pandemic because God is displeased because we are perhaps not keeping Sunday? Now they're going to have a day of fasting and prayer. The Holy Father and just for interest's sake, the Bible says, call nobody father, except, of course, your earthly father who is your father and your heavenly father. But you're not supposed to call anyone else in terms of a religious environment your father. And uh, nobody is holy except God. So he was uh, praying here on this palace, which is associated with Mary, and he said, we began May a short while ago, Marian month par excellence, during which the faithful love to visit shrines dedicated to Our Lady, Pope Francis said. This year, because of the health situation, we go spiritually to these places of faith and devotion to place in the Holy Virgin's heart our worries, expectations and plans for the future. And as prayer is a universal value, I have accepted the proposal of the Higher Committee of Human Fraternity so that May 14 believers of all religions unite spiritually in a day of prayer and fasting and works of charity to implore God to help humanity overcome the coronavirus pandemic. Remember May 14, all believers together, believers of different traditions to pray, fast and do works of charity. This is a typical response. You go to shrines, you do things in order to get the attention of God. God is right next to you. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to have a personal relationship with God. Uh, in this system there are mediators, but God wants us to talk to him directly. America, the Jesuit Review. These are interesting sources, right? Yeah. Pope Francis joins Muslim leaders in calling for World Day of Prayer to end the coronavirus. 
So there is obviously a mobilization of religion. Pope Francis calls on believers of all religions to pray together on May 14 to ask God to rid the world of the pandemic and ask that the vaccines to be made available to all persons threatened with infection. So what side of the divide is he on, right? Now you've got this again. You have We've the, got I, the people that says the vaccine is the enemy. And here it's a friend. It's a friend. Pope Francis has endorsed the call to the believers of all the religions to unite together spiritually on May 14 in a day of prayer and fasting to implore God to help humanity overcome the coronavirus pandemic. He also encouraged international cooperation to respond to the crisis and emphasized the importance that scientific effort to find a vaccine to put to be to be put together in a transparent and disinterested way and that the essential technologies be made universally available. So he's asking for the vaccine and people are, you know, going against the vaccine. We have this interplay all the time, no matter where you look. And where does the United Nations stand in all of this? UN Chief supports Higher Committee of Human Fraternities call to pray for humanity on the 14th of May. So this is not just one religious leader asking for something. We have the major religions coming together. We have the governments of the world, because that's the United Nations, uh, doing exactly the same things. Uh, Guterres tweeted on Sunday, in difficult times we must stand together for peace, humanity and solidarity. This is an allusion to the common good, right? Yes. I join His Holiness Pope Francis and the Grand Imam of al Asar, Sheikh Ahmed al Tayeb, and their support for the prayer of humanity this 14th May, a moment for reflection, hope and faith. So all of humanity is associated in this movement. Now, I found this one particularly interesting. This is uh, one of the political parties, they call it a far right party in, in Europe. And these parties are gaining in popularity. Mm. And they used the statement by Netanyahu's son, uh, and he suddenly became a star of the German Nationalist Party after calling the EU evil. Now, remember Netanyahu is Jewish, right? Yes. So this is a young Jewish boy and he is calling the EU evil and this party has latched onto this slogan. Now, where is this going? The lawmakers tweets poster quoting Yeh Netanyahu after the Prime Minister's son appealed for a return to a free, democratic and Christian Europe. I have consistently said this. Eventually, because of the fear of being swamped, they will return to Christianity. The son of the Israeli Prime Minister has become the new campaign face for the far-right alternative for Germany. The AFD party, after calling the European Union an evil globalist organization. So here you have globalism mm -hmm. with the main globalist role players against nationalism. And Trump is of course the champion of nationalism and they are the champions of globalism. globalism. And Christianity is the remedy. Now, isn't that fascinating? Yes. Christianity is the remedy for the evils of the globalists. So you're playing the two sides off against each other. Writes Yer Netanyahu, who tweeted alongside a poster that reads, Schengen is dead. Well, it's interesting, they've closed all the borders, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully the globalist EU will be too then Europe will again be free, democratic and Christian. Netanyahu later tweeted back at Ku's writing, please act with your colleagues to stop this insanity. 
with a link to a page on the NGO Monitor website that describes how the German federal government provides millions of euros to political advocacy, NGOs in Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, through a variety of frameworks. We have one day in a year to remember our fallen soldiers. And you destroy it with a memorial to Palestinian terrorists? EU is an enemy of Israel. Trump is the friend of Israel. Mm. And an enemy to all European Christian countries. Schengen Zone is dead and soon your evil globalist organization will be too and Europe will return to be free, democratic and Christian. But now doesn't the Bible say that the ten horns will give their power unto the beast? Mm -hmm. Now when they were a Christian political a religious uh, conglomerate in the Dark Ages, then all power was given unto Roman Catholicism. The Pope is appealing mm. for people to join up and here you have exactly the same call. Go back to your Christian roots. Now when they do that, don't you think they will introduce legislation that is in harmony with papal legislation again. Yes. And uh, weren't there laws in the Middle Ages uh, banning Saturday keeping and uh, decrees against those that kept the Sabbath, the Valdensians, yes. the Albigensians, all of these groups were persecuted relentlessly. Are we heading in that same direction? Now, this is a very interesting one. And you found this, right? Yes, I heard a bit about it. And then I saw that there's a quite a, 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 a different stories about this Saint Corona. So nobody has exactly this story. The story goes that uh, there might have been a husband and wife that were persec um, persecuted and then martyred for their religion. And then now, because of the coronavirus, a lot of Catholics went now because uh, Saint Corona, along with Saint Victor, are saints. And um, now they were asking, is Saint Corona the patron saint for epidemics? Yeah, but she wasn't really the patron no. saint, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice name to couple to, right? Yeah, and what's interesting is uh, the feast day for Saint Corona. It's just interesting. It's 14 May. Now that is fascinating. Yeah. Do you think that is coincidence? Yeah. That Saint Corona should have a feast day, which is a national day of fasting and prayer and good works. Uh, and that she has exactly the same name. I find this interesting. So according to the Roman Martyrology, the Catholic Church's officials list of recognized saints and people who have been beatified as Corona was dying. She saw two crowns falling from heaven, one for Victor and the other for herself, the martyrology says. Yeah, and then what is also interesting for me in here is coronaviruses are named for their crown-like spikes on their surface. Uh -huh. According to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, Corona means crown in Latin. So it's just interesting how they link this. Yes, a Corona, of course, is also the, the blaze around the sun. sun. So yes. there are a lot of parallels that you could draw and play with and keep yourself occupied. Yes. But we are interested in where's it going. Where are we going? So let's have a look at how the various countries have responded and what they have brought in in order to uh, control the coronavirus. Yes. Not all this legislation is now as a, as a consequence of corona, for example. Poland and many of the countries of the former East Bloc have actually introduced Sunday legislation already. Mm -hmm. And even Germany had uh, very strict rules regarding Sunday. Yeah, I think Austria as well. Yes, exactly. So Sunday trading ban is already in place in many places like Poland. The Sunday trading ban took effect in 
2018, and it was incremental, right? Yes. So this web page tells us how it was going to be implemented, and that first there was going to be one Sunday a month, then two, then three, and eventually it would be completely closed. Yes. So as a general overview, in 2019, there are 37 Sundays with the trading ban. Meanwhile, in 2020, customers won't be able to do their shopping for 45 Sundays of the year. And it will just continue. And then it will increase until all the Sundays are closed. So it was brought in incrementally. It's like uh, something sneaking up on you, right? Yeah. Something in the pipeline. Something in the pipeline. Now, Puerto Rico as a result of the COVID-19. Yeah, is... The governor extends lockdown and curfew, key deadlines and government measures in response to COVID-19. So if you do not adhere to the, uh, to the rules and regulations, you can be quite seriously fined. Violators may face a six months jail term or a fine of up to $5,000. It's interesting that we have just received guidelines as well in our country yes. for violations of uh, the, the restrictions that have been put mm -hmm. in place. Now, please, we are not advocating violating any restrictions. No. That, that is not the aim of this. We are just looking at a trend. Where are we going? Yes. So, if there are legislations that are not in uh, contradiction to God's law, then we are supposed to obey the powers that be. So limiting traffic and then no one may use their cars on Sundays. That's an interesting law. Except in case of emergencies and increasing business closures on Sundays. Grocery stores must remain closed on Sundays and pharmacies will only be allowed to sell medicines and personal hygiene products. Gas stations may only sell fuel. So this is a slow encroachment. I'm wondering, will these laws be relaxed again or mm -hmm. will they stay in place? Where did they where did these laws come from? Yes. Who made them? Why? Slovenia. It seems increasingly likely that the closure of stores, including groceries, on Sundays as a result of the coronavirus epidemic will become permanent arrangement mm. and be extended also to the period after the crisis. Now, isn't this exactly what we've been speaking about for years? Yes. And it's, it's not in your face. Everybody is okay with this because there's a common enemy, yes. the coronavirus. Yes, correct. A legislative initiative to this effect announced by the opposition left was backed on Thursday by Prime Minister Janis Jansa. In announcing the legislative proposal, the left joined today the trade unions of shop assistants. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a few years ago, I gave some lectures about how Sunday legislation is encroaching on Europe and what the bishops' conferences had decided. And uh, it was fascinating that all the trade unions of Europe were on board yes. with Sunday legislation. And here again you have the trade unions trade involved. The left pointed out that voters had already decided in a referendum in 2003 that stores should be closed on Sundays, but were ignored later due to pressure from retailers. Now what's interesting for me on that is, it's not against what, how the people feel. The exactly. people wanted this. Yes, the people wanted the, and the, the most Christian people world. Want this. The Christian world wants this to happen. Absolutely. So, is it possible that your fear of the mark of the beast as a chip? 
can lead you to accept the mark of the beast without you knowing that you've actually gone from the frying pan into the fire? This is what we are looking at. This is what we are looking at. Shops in Croatia to close on Sunday. Trading, however, has been banned on Sundays. The head of the National Coronavirus Crisis Management Team, Interior Minister Bozinovic, said on Saturday that the decision banning Sunday work was made based on recommendations by epidemiologists. It's all, that's interesting. Um, most of these... The scientists say it's best to close on Sunday. Declining to comment on the speculation that the present situation was being used for political purposes. <laughs> now, uh, epidemiologists decide that closing on Sunday is, is a good idea. Uh, why not Saturday or Wednesday or Monday or whatever? Yes. Because the human psyche is geared. Yeah. for this and they're ready for it and this is exactly what the Bible says would happen. CNN reports total lockdown in general Santos City every Sunday. Are we seeing a talk about Sunday legislation? Well it's not it's not uh, let's say national law yet but it is being introduced piece by piece. Now there's a statement in the Spirit of Prophecy say, that says when they start talking about Sunday legislation, there's really time to be serious and to leave the cities, for example. Yes. So a total lockdown will be imposed every Sunday starting April the 5th. So these things are happening yeah, this is or, in the Philippines. This is in the Philippines, yes. Here's a government web page regarding the Cayman Islands, for example. A hard curfew from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily in and all day on Sunday. Now, it's interesting, we also have curfews in our country yes. between... Uh, 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. Yes, correct. So, uh, is this being orchestrated? Why should it be the same in the Cayman Islands, Southern Africa, other portions of the world? There must be a power that is coordinating the movements. And also interesting on this one for me is that um, there's a difference. You've got soft curfew and hard curfew. And the Sunday falls then under the hard curfew. Yes, very interesting. And again, you are liable to fines and imprisonment of six months if you contravene any of these restrictions. Yeah, and that's on the soft curfew. Under the hard curfew, $3,000 fines. So that is a considerable amount of money to be fined. Yeah, if you transgress the Sunday curfew at all, because you, that hard curfew is the whole day. Do you think that this could be expanded to not being able to buy or sell at all? If you do not go along with uh, this particular legislation? I think it can move towards that. Here's the Cyprus Mail. Coronavirus shoppers and supermarkets say Sunday closing makes no sense. Shoppers and supermarkets alike are unhappy with the latest restrictions imposed by the government that will see supermarkets closed from this Sunday. Yeah, so here the people are not too happy about it. Exactly. But there's not much they can do about it. No, it's there. It's been done. And the people haven't been asked no, whether, they, not... whether they agree with it or not. For sure it is a mistake to restrict hours even more so. More people will be in the supermarkets at the same time. They're saying, well, if you close one day, then you're pushing everybody into the other days. But uh, it's heading this way, whether we like it or not. Here's another web page. This is now Greece. Government announces changes to supermarket hours. No more Sunday opening. Mm. The government on Tuesday announced changes to supermarket opening hours. 
and they will be closed on Sundays. So the opening of supermarkets on Sunday has been broadly denounced by labor groups. Again, you have the trade unions as an unacceptable burden on supermarket workers. Interesting that some countries the people are for it and under others against it. But that doesn't stop them from doing it. Exactly. But the trade unions, yes. they are all on board. Now, if you go into the history of the trade unions, where trade unions started, you will see that it comes from the Roman activists, Roman church. Okay. Here's Belize, complete shutdown announced for businesses in Cayo on Sunday. Sundays in the Cayo district, there must be a complete shutdown of businesses. Any movements on Sunday must be by essential workers only or for emergencies only. The public is urged to comply with the regulations. It's amazing how it just sneaks in everywhere. Yeah. Here's one from Albania. Albanian government tightens restrictive measures amidst COVID-19. Again, we have prohibiting all activity and movement on Sunday. The world seems to be heading towards Sunday legislation. And it's not um, a newspaper saying this. This is legislation already. Yes, this is it legislation. It can be retracted after the coronavirus, sure. But once it's there, why but would they retract it? And what then in the near future if a greater epidemic emerges? Yes, but they, they are sneakier than that even because they've already linked Sunday to the environment. Mm, yes. So the planet needs a day of rest. So once this is already in place and Laudato Si asks for Sunday to give the planet a day of rest, well then why would you remove it? You're already in compliance with, with climate change uh, legislation. That's interesting because climate change will also fall under disaster. Absolutely. Yes. And this is the disaster legislation that's being implemented. Correct. And here's the independent coronavirus. Peru announces social restrictions by gender. <laughs> <laughs> now, now it gets rather interesting. Uh, men will be allowed to leave their homes on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, while women can go out on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. On Sunday, no one is allowed to leave home. So Sunday is constantly separated from the rest of the week. So the first day of the week is being uh, targeted. Yes. And the seventh day of the week, well, you can go shopping on Saturday. It's not an important day. And this one is Peru, but also it mentions in this article Panama has done the same. So these are the South American yes. countries. So these trade unions are going to be very involved. Now it's interesting that we have these statements in uh, the Spirit of Prophecy. The trade unions will be the cause of the most terrible violence that has ever been seen amongst human beings. No. We're going to see this in the, in the cities. And uh, we in South Africa have a fair amount of experience as to what happens when the people are angry. Mm. Here's another statement. And the trade unions will be one of the agencies that will bring upon this earth a time of trouble such as has not been since the world began. So there is something that is waiting for us and I believe the cities are going to be hotbeds of strife. Yeah, and these articles that we've had now, you've also seen that a lot of the trade unions are involved. Absolutely. Now, these were all the countries. Now, what about the United States? The United States is supposed to take the lead, right? And the governor of New Jersey made some interesting comments. 
there were of course other governors in other states that said no we'll stick to the constitution which separates church and state but uh, in New Jersey the story was different let's have a look further I am directing all non-essential retail businesses to indefinitely close their physical stores to the public effective at 9 p.m. tonight. Only, and by the way, 9 p.m. in particular out of respect of the Sabbath. Only businesses critical to our response may remain physically open to the public. I think he needs a Bible study as to which day is the Sabbath. He's of course referring to Sunday as being the Sabbath, which is not the Sabbath. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, our God. What's interesting is all the sentiments are towards Sunday. Everybody, all the countries that we've seen, everything is geared towards Sunday. Correct. Yes, absolutely. Now, I'm wondering how they're going to get around this because it is obvious that we have a clash here between God's rest day and one that was changed by man, uh, even if it was a church, with not one Bible text to substantiate their view. Uh, this one here from Granada was very interesting. Uh, I think you said they retracted this, right? Because I, of I'm not 100% certain, but I, I think that was what happened. There was opposition against this, and then they retracted it. So the government of Granada is assuring the population that the announcement of Saturday, 11 April, as the next shopping day is not meant as an affront to any religion. So here they were they advocating had, one day for shopping. Yes, they had 24-hour curfews. And you were only allowed to go shopping on the day that the government said this is an open day to go shopping. And that happened to be a Saturday. Yes. So if you kept the seventh day, then you couldn't go shopping and you couldn't get your essentials. Now, this is just a mode of slow encroachment. So do you think that uh, in the near future there could be laws, judging from all of these things, that would say Saturday you will work, Saturday is the day that uh, will be like a normal work day, and Sunday everything will be closed. You know what was interesting also is the reason why they said they had to do the shopping on the Saturday is that, again, the scientists were telling them that that was working out to be the best day for it. Uh, one wonders why. Why one day would be better than another day. So it comes back every time when the science shows something to be okay, then if government says also it's okay, then we can implement it. Yes. Now what will happen if you get the governments to start saying global warming? We have to have, have day. one day off, we have to then have a six day work week to bring the economy back. When the papacy gets all the, the people in the know together and decide how to re-educate. But the re-education has already actually started. We are being attuned to a particular way of living and thinking. So the bottom line of our little discussion today was the real aim is a confrontation between the Word of God and the dictates of men. For in vain they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus was perfectly clear that he did not come to abolish the law. Not one jot or one tittle would by any means disappear from the law. So the world is heading in this direction and we just substantiate and confirm the fact that time is short. We are going home soon. Amen. Let's pray. Will you pray for us? I will pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege of 
us having this discussion. We ask that you bless the viewers and bless us as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. To subscribe, click here. When the bell appears, click and you will receive notifications. To watch the next one, click here. Thank you again and see you next time.